he tries to, just be miserable. He'll have to come back. <laughs> Amen. I thank God for Chris and Anita and the gifts that God sent to this church. Let's stand to our feet and hold our Bibles in our hands. And uh, let's say this together. Internet audience, we invite you to say this with us as well. Heavenly Father, thank you for the Bible. This is my Bible. It's the Word. It's the truth. It's a love letter from you to me, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, and we are going to be partaking of communion together, the Lord's Supper together, at the uh, close of this message. We do that the first Sunday of every month. We're going to remember Jesus Christ and how he uh, gave his body and shed his lifeblood for us. Uh, the title of this message is, He Took Our Shame. And this is something we all need to be reminded of, that Jesus not only bore our sins and took the judgment for our sins when he suffered and died on the cross, but he also took the shame of those sins off of us. And we need to recognize that and appropriate that by faith in our lives because there's so too many people walking around, too many Christians walking around letting shame of the past drag them down and keep them from doing what God wants them to do. It's like driving a car. You know, when you drive a car, you got a big windshield in front of you and you got a small rear view mirror. If you spend all your time looking at that rear view mirror, exa examining what's behind you and not looking through that big glass that's in front of you, <laughs> you're likely to run into something, have an accident, and hurt yourself and other people as well. You know, when, when we drive an automobile, all we ever do is, for that rearview mirror, if we're wise and safe drivers, all we ever do is occasionally glance at it, but we don't spend a lot of time uh, looking at it. And it's the same with our lives. We can't spend uh, all our lives uh, looking at the past. We have to put the past behind us and move on to that wonderful plan that God has for our lives. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. So he's got a great future and a hope for all of us. Paul said, brethren, I do not, this was in Philippians, Brother, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and looking forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And even the, the, the uh, you can't even rest on the laurels of the past. It's good to, you know, God's got a great future for us. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so he's not only the Lord of today and the Lord of our future, he's taking care of yesterday too, including uh, the shame of those things that we did that, you know, uh, at the time cost us shame, but we need to understand Jesus took that shame as well as our judgment when he went to the cross at Calvary. And we need to believe that by faith if we want to walk freely and be able to keep our eyes on the pathway that God has for our lives. Amen. Amen. So the theme for this message, and we're going to seal all this as we partake of the Lord's Supper together. I'm not going to preach a long message to you. You say he says that sometimes and then does, but I, I don't think I am anyway. But, but uh, we're going to seal all this with the partaking of the Lord's Supper together as we remember what Jesus did for us at Calvary. So he not only took the judgment for our sins, he also took the shame of them. Let me give you some scripture. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 12. How many of you found Hebrews chapter 12? And I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. 
There it is. You've got to lay aside that sin. You've got to run, uh, run with endurance the race that is set before us. We need to look out of the big windshield, folks. And verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, we need to understand that Jesus, this wonderful Savior, the only person that's ever walked this planet without committing sin, he didn't go to the cross for his sins, he went to the cross for our sins. He never committed any sin. He knew that he was going to be taking our sins upon himself. And he despised the shame. That's something that he uh, knew he was going to have to experience with his sacrificial work for us on the cross at Calvary, but he wasn't looking forward to it. That was an unpleasant thought to him. And I believe one reason when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he, he said, Father, your will, not mine, be done. And he was, uh, he was in anguish so much so that he sweated uh, great drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. I believe part of that anguish was knowing what was ahead of him and realizing that he was not only going to be taking the judgment for our sins. I believe more than that, the anguish was caused by the realization that he was going to experience what it's like to be separated from his father and also that he was going to be bearing the shame of our sins, taking that shame off of us and taking it upon himself on the cross at Calvary. And I know we need to preach on this because I was looking for illustrations on it and couldn't find any in, in various uh, 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 you know, places I, I look. So, you know, but it's in the scriptures. And it's awesome that Jesus loves us so much that he took all of the shame of all the sinful things we ever did from us so that we don't have to dwell on them, we don't have to sit around thinking about them. We can move forward in newness of life the way God's plan for us uh, is. To, is Amen. We can look out of the big windshield. And really, when we talk about 2 Corinthians 5.21, the word says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Usually when we talk about that verse, all we mentioned is that that means that he took the judgment for our sins with his sacrificial work by, by going to the cross for us. But not only did he take the judgment for our sins, he took the shame of our sins upon himself. Amen. <laughs> he took the sin upon himself. So much so that the uh, sky became dark for three hours uh, from noon to 3 p.m. the sky was dark and I believe that was the, all of the sins that uh, ever had been committed or ever would be committed coming upon Jesus Christ our Savior as he suffered and died on the cross for us. Now you may have heard some people try to explain that away as an eclipse of the sun. That's impossible because at the time of Passover Somebody help me here. It either always comes on a new moon or a full moon. New, it always comes on a new moon, and it's imp impossible for an eclipse to occur during a new moon. So it was impossible for that to have been a solar eclipse. That was something that was supernatural. That was the sins of the world coming upon Jesus on that cross, including all of our shame, all of the shame that goes with those sins. This is such a wonderful, wonderful promise. It's not talked about enough. It needs to be. That's why we're talking about it this morning. And we need to accept it by faith and receive it and appropriate it in our lives and not, not go through our lives always looking in the rearview mirror of guilt and shame. Once we repent and turn away from it, we're washed clean by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and we're free to live our lives in that freedom. Glory to God. But you know, that means we don't need to let the accuser of the brethren. Satan is referred to, one of his uh, titles is the accuser of the brethren. And he would like to become every man's conscience. But he's not going to be my conscience. You know, he likes to, 
He likes to remind us of those things that we've already uh, taken to the cross and that we've already repented of and that we've already been cleansed of. He wants to sit on our shoulders and try to put shame on us for things that we've already been forgiven of and, and cleansed from. And we need to take authority over him. They overcome him. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death the uh, book of Revelation tells us and, and so the blood of the lamb hallelujah has taken that shame off of us glory to God and that's part of the word of our testimony hallelujah praise God oh somebody get excited here thank you Jesus and then in 2 Corinthians 5 17 Paul wrote this verse, he said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And included in those old things that passed away was all of the shame and guilt of those sins that we committed uh, and, and repented of. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody get excited about this? I, 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 you know, this is... Uh, July 4th will be Tuesday, of course. We, this is the weekend where we celebrated church, but, you know, we're celebrating freedom. It's, it's Chris's song, you know, <clears throat> about freedom, and that's what it's all about. But uh, as Chris pointed out, true freedom only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. But thank God that freedom includes the freedom from shame. Amen. And, you know, uh, all of us have done things that cost us shame when we did them. But we're not there anymore, folks. We've moved on. We've accepted Jesus Christ uh, as our Lord and Savior. We've accepted His forgiveness. And we've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. It, at the Lord's, uh, the, that first Lord's Supper in Matthew chapter 26, if you'd like to turn there. Verse 28. This is during the uh, Lord's Supper. And Jesus said, For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Not just for the forgiveness of sins. He did it for the remission of our sins. And that word remission, uh, yes, it includes forgiveness, but it also means cleansing, taking it away from us. Hallelujah. Our sins have been removed as far as the east is from the west. And I've, I've shared this many times. You know, looking at this globe over here, the Bible says as far as the east is from the west. You know, west meets, uh, north meets south, but east never meets west. Did you know that? Let me demonstrate over here with this globe. If we, I've got a little... We'll solve that. We'll take the globe over here. <laughs> Amen. And let's just set this here for a minute. Now, if I start out, because I, I want you to be sure you see this. Right here is Houston, Texas. If I start out heading uh, east, I go, you know, I go on over these states, maybe over Georgia, Florida, you know, Alabama, I'm going, I'm starting out east, I'm heading east, and I go on over here, I get over here to probably Spain or Morocco, one of these places, North Africa or southern part of Europe, I'm still heading east, right, as, I, as I'm traveling. Oops. And then I keep going and I get over here, I go through the Middle East, I go through India, I'm still heading east. And I go on through China, and I get out here in the Pacific Ocean, and I'm still heading east. I started out east. I'm still going east. And I get over here to California. Uh, I'm still going east. And I get over here to New Mexico. I'm still going east. Finally, I get back to Houston, Texas. I was going east the whole time. Amen. I left going east, yes. and when I wound up back where I started, I was still going east. Amen. East never met west. You get that? Now, if I head north, if I head out of, out of Houston and I'm going north, I'm going north till I get up here to the North Pole 
and then as I cross over the North Pole, then I'm heading south. And I'm going south down here, and then when I get down uh, here to the South Pole, then I'm heading north again. So uh, it, it, north and south meet, Amen. but east never meets west. Amen. Shows you how you know, God created all this. He knew the earth was round. And when he said, uh, as far as the east is from the west, that's what he meant. Amen. Y'all get that? So that's how far he's removed our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. Glory to God. Here's our American flag. This is the... We'll be sure and put that back up there. Oops. There we go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, they've been removed. When I got baptized in water, I, I got uh, saved in February 24th, 1985, and we decided to go to Israel, and we went in summer of 1985. I, I decided to wait till we got to Israel because I wanted to be baptized in the Jordan River. So, uh, we were with a group, and we went to the Jordan River, and I was bad. I remember when I was in the water there uh, in the Jordan River, uh, there was fish. I saw fish, live fish swimming around in the river. I could see them. And so I was baptized in the Jordan River. Then we went by bus. We had two bus loads of people. We went to the Dead Sea, and we, we would see the Jordan River all along the way. The Jordan River flows into the Dead Sea. When I got to the Dead Sea, there was nothing alive in the Dead Sea. Everything was dead, and the, nothing can live in the Dead Sea because of the uh, chemical content. And I thought about my sins. You know, when, we, when we're baptized in Christ, when we, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, and that's what the water baptism tells us. You know, we're identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When, when we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior and are spiritually baptized in Him, then our, our sins are washed away. And they go to a place where they can never live again. Hallelujah. And, and I, even the geography of the nation of Israel speaks volumes to us. And, you know, Jesus was uh, himself as an act of obedience to, was uh, baptized in the uh, Jordan River by John the Baptist. So, you know, there, when, we, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, our sins are washed away and they do not exist anymore. Amen. 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 Can we get this? Can we embrace this? Amen. And then let's go to 1 John. We're talking about remission of sins. Uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. That cleansing, not only, uh, that, that's not only the judgment, but that's the shame of it. He's cleansed us from the shame of our sins. Amen. Verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us, our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and that would mean all behavior that's not right in the eyes of God uh, there and so uh, we know we become we have right standing with God the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior but there are times uh, in our walk where we miss the mark and uh, all we have to do is ask God for forgiveness just turn away from it and turn to him and he's there and then that cleansing, that then cleansing takes place again, you know. And uh, the, the shame, uh, uh, the guilt, it's all washed away by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe this? Let me see how many of you. Praise God. Thank you, Hallelujah. I believe we're getting it. Amen. So we're not going to drive through life uh, looking in the rearview mirror having wrecks and crashes and missing turns and uh, running, you know, running through uh, warning signals and all kinds of stuff. We're going to keep, we're going to look through the big windshield. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He's got a, he's got a, 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 a 
road map for our lives. And one way to make sure you stay on it is with this word. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And he wants us to continue to look at that good plan that he has for us and not drive through life looking in the rearview mirror of shame and, and guilt. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's go, we're going to go ahead and pass out the uh, bread and the cups. And we're just going to appropriate this by faith. God has put, he knows that we are physical beings, we're, we're spirit beings, but we have physical bodies, that's part of us. We're, we have a spirit, soul, and a, a body. And so it, since we have physical bodies, he knows that we like to touch things and that just kind of, <laughs> because we're in these physical bodies. And so he's given us a physical points of contact approved in the scriptures to help us to release our faith in different areas. And one of those physical points of contact is communion, the Lord's Supper. And as we partake of communion, this is something we can touch, we can taste, and we can appropriate our faith in God's promises and in this wonderful gospel, this new covenant that he's, that he's given us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we partake, we're going to have a time to... Uh, uh, I'll ask, to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to search our souls. If there is anything bothering us that we need to uh, turn away from and ask forgiveness, it's there. <laughs> He's already taken it. He's taken the guilt of it, the shame of it, the, ju the punishment for it. He's already done all that. We just have to accept that by faith, that, that biblical truth by faith. Also, this is a good time to believe to whatever promise there is in God's word that you need in your life, this is a good time to believe for that promise to be manifested as we're reminded of what Jesus did for us when he suffered and died on the cross for us. And again, part of that suffering was taking that shame away from us. He actually experienced that for us. Don't you just... Think of the great love he has for us that he was willing to do that. Isn't that amazing that he loves us that much that he, he, he took that shame, he experienced that shame, he took it off of us. And all of that shame came upon him. He did it because of the joy set before him. He knew he was going to have there's a children in the kingdom of God as a result. So he despised it, but he did it. <laughs> he, the thought wasn't pleasant, but he did it because of his great love for us. Also, we use the uh, Jewish uh, matzo bread that the Jews have been using for thousands of years at Passover. And, you know, you see Jesus all throughout this. You see the holes in the bread. He was wounded for our transgressions. You see the stripes on the bread. By his stripes we were healed. You see dark places on the bread. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yeah, so it's just Jesus through and through. And so what we need to remember is when we chew that bread, we want to appropriate the promises of God by faith. And if, if you need healing when you, you chew that bread, uh, chew healing with the molars of faith. And when you, let's don't, we'll do it all together. But when you drink from that cup, uh, taste the sweetness of the forgiveness of our sins and the taking the shame away from our sins and taking all guilt and taking the judgment away for our sins. You taste the sweetness, the love of what he did for us with the palate of faith. Amen. So let's take a little time to uh, ask the Holy Spirit to help show us uh, if there's anything we need to repent of and also whatever we need to appropriate regarding the promises of God, whether it be uh, emotional healing uh, um, perhaps it's someone's been hurt by someone else. Well, he took all those bruises when he suffered. He bled not only externally, he bled internally. Uh, bruises and internal bleeding. And if one's heart or soul is bleeding because of uh, something someone else has done, perhaps you're here this morning uh, with a broken heart. 
Well, he went to the cross so that your broken heart could be healed. Amen. Perhaps we need to forgive someone who's hurt us. We can do that and, and make that decision to forgive by faith as we partake of the uh, Lord's Supper together. So let's take this time to ask the Lord to help us to know what to believe for, what to appropriate by faith. God may show you someone you need to forgive. Well, let's partake of the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving your body for us. And let's drink from the cup. Thank you, Lord, for your blood, which was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for taking the shame of our sins away from us, the, the judgment for our sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You can... The ushers will be taking the cups up. But let's just uh, lift our hands and we thank you, Lord, for you're such a wonderful, wonderful Savior. You did such a complete job. <laughs> such a complete job. For, because of your great love for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, before we, we go on with the service, I'd just like to ask everyone with your eyes closed in an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God, also those watching by Internet, and ask yourself this question. Do I know that I know that I know that I've, I've truly surrendered my heart to Jesus, that I've accepted Him as my personal Lord and Savior? And if you're saying within your heart, you know, I, I, I know about Jesus, I... But I'm not sure I've ever really invited him into my heart to have that personal relationship with him. And if that's what you want to do, I'm, it's all about decision. It's, it, God's not limited by anyone's weaknesses. He's only limited by our decisions. And all he's asking is to make that decision. If you're saying, that's what I, I need to do, I need to make that decision to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I want you to lift your hand up high wherever you are. I need to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. If you're watching by internet, God sees your hand wherever you are. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It may be that you've known the Lord for many years, but you, just, you, you know you've gotten off the, the plan that he has for your life, the pathway that he set before you. You just want to come back to the Lord and make a fresh dedication of your life to Jesus. That's the desire of your heart. Lift your hand wherever you are. Just want to come back to Jesus. If you're watching by internet, God sees your hand. And that's the important person to see it is God. Hallelujah. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit or refilled with the Holy Spirit, lift your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Those that want to be uh, filled with the Holy Spirit or refilled with the Holy Spirit, let's see those hands again. I saw several hands going up to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Let's all stand to our feet. And we, I want to ask those that lifted their hands to be filled or refilled with the Holy Spirit to come forward if you would because we want to have a prayer partner spend some time praying with you uh, at the close of the service. So if you lifted your hands for that, just be bold and come on, step out and come up front here. Don't be bashful. We want to, we want to have someone pray with you personally. And, and uh, You can come up at any time. Amen. We're going to go ahead and say this uh, prayer together. And uh, we're going to say a prayer of uh, salvation. And if you're 
rededicating your life to Jesus, this can be your prayer of rededication as well. Let's all say this. We know we have people getting saved over the Internet, and uh, many people watch us on the Internet. And let's say this prayer to encourage those that may be saying it for the first time. Amen. Say this together. Heavenly Father, Internet audience, say this with us. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. Jesus, I accept you now and forever as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, take charge of my life, and make something very beautiful and very wonderful out of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to remind the internet audience, if you said that prayer, there's a praise report button at glorychurch.com. That's our website, glorychurch.com. If you'll click on that praise report button, we'd love to hear from you just to rejoice with the angels in heaven over what God's doing in your life. Also, you'll find seven free books available to you at that website. Uh, there's a free books button. Uh, seven books that I've written. I give God the glory for them. We just want to get them to you free of charge uh, just to help you in your uh, Christian walk. That's whether you just said that prayer for the first time or you've just been a believer for many years and, and uh, watching the live streaming, it, they're available to, to anyone that wants them uh, at glorychurch.com. Also, we have books on the table in paperback form. Uh, as you go out through the do uh, this door there on the right under the fire extinguisher, we put them under the fire extinguisher because they're so hot. You know, if they <laughs> catch on fire, we want to be able to get that fire extinguisher. So uh, don't want to get in trouble, you know, with them. And uh, we would like for you to have those books, and uh, there's no charge for them, free of charge. Also, not just only for your reading, but you can use them as a witnessing tool and to bless others and give them out to others. And they're invitation cards uh, to the church tucked inside them, and you can invite people to the church that way as well by giving them a free book. I want to remind you we are having the prayer service uh, tonight at 6 o'clock. And we were really, last Sunday we had the most we've ever had at our prayer service. You know, that's the hardest, uh, seems like the hardest thing I'm, Maybe I need to say it's the easiest thing, change my... <laughs> but but uh, seems like getting people to prayer meetings, you know, it it's, it's, can be difficult. But we had the most we've ever had at a Sunday evening prayer service last Sunday evening. So we invite you to come this uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, and we'll be streaming live over the Internet. And we have people sending in prayer requests from all over the world to these uh, prayer services. Uh, as Brandon mentioned, the, the Tuesday noon prayer meeting we're not going to be having on the 4th, but be sure and pray. Let's, we need to pray every day, and don't forget the One Church, One Day Prayer Initiative that day. That's our day. The prayer guidelines are in the back. We'll, we will, of course, be having our service Wednesday night at 7, as we always do, and I'm excited about that. With school out, the Wednesday night services have been, uh, our attendance has been increasing. And we've uh, really been seeing the power of the Holy Spirit move on these Wednesday night services. So we encourage you to, to uh, try to be here for those. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon with your family. And uh, we love you. Thanks so much for coming out. Uh, you know, I thank God for you so that I have uh, someone to preach to. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Love you. Love each and every one of you.